In this video, we are trying to find all of our complex zeros for this polynomial function. Uh, now remember, when we're talking about complex zeros, this is not just imaginary zeros. The real numbers are part of the complex numbers. So when it says find the complex zeros, it means find both real and imaginary complex zeros. So when you're trying to find the zeros of a complex, uh, of a polynomial function, uh, what you need to do first is ask yourself, well, what is the degree of this polynomial function? The degree is going to help us determine how many zeros we're actually looking for. So in this case, we have a fourth degree polynomial function, which means we are looking for four zeros. Now, once you know how many zeros you're looking for, what you want to do first is look at the polynomial function and ask yourself, is this easily factorable? Uh, can I factor it by grouping, or is it a difference of squares, or does it act like a quadratic trinomial that can be easily factored in the same form? Uh, in this case, it's none of those. We can't factor this very easily. Um, so what we have to do is then look at all of our values of p and q and take their quotients. Use the rational zeros theorem. Um, and then that's going to give us all of our potential rational zeros and then synthetically divide to figure out which ones are in fact our zeros. And that would be what we would do normally. Um, but in this case, what we're going to do is we're still going to find all of our possible rational zeros, but we're going to cheat a little bit. And we're going to take a look at the graph of this function to see where it crosses the x-axis and then use our synthetic division to confirm that those are in fact the zeros of this function. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our values of p and q. So the factors of p are, so here's p, factors of p are plus or minus 1, uh, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 5, and plus or minus 10. So those are all of the factors of 10. Uh, the factors of q are just plus or minus 1. So when we take p divided by q, it's just going to be the factors of p. So these are, this is p divided by q. So those are all of our potential rational zeros. So like I said, uh, now at this point, you would normally just use synthetic division and go through all eight of these to figure out which ones are your zeros. But we're going to cheat a little bit and kind of help us, guide us in the right direction for what values we should use for synthetic division. And we're gonna do that by looking at the graph. Uh, so this here is the graph of this fourth degree polynomial. And we can see that there are two places where this crosses the x-axis, at negative 2 and at 1, um, which means we could probably try one of these or both of these numbers using synthetic division in this. So I'm going to start by using negative 2 um, for synthetic division. So I'm going to use negative 2. So if x equals negative 2, that means that x plus 2 would be a factor. So negative 2 for synthetic division, then bring down all the coefficients, 1, 1, 3, 5, negative 10, and divide using synthetic division. So bring the 1 down, 1 times negative 2, that's negative 2, 1 plus negative 2 is negative 1, negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, 3 and 2 is 5, 5 times negative 2, that's negative 10. Um, 5 minus 10, that's negative 5. And then negative 5 times negative 2, that's positive 10. Negative 10 plus 10, that's 0. So we've confirmed that x minus 2 is in fact a 0, and x plus 2 is a factor. So if we're going to write this in factored form, we have x plus 2 as one of our factors. So we'll fill in our other factors here in a minute. Uh, now remember, this was a fourth degree polynomial here. This was x to the fourth, which gives us now this cubic. So we can continue to uh, use synthetic division, but actually this one is factorable by grouping from here, which is pretty nice. So if we wanted to factor this, so this would be our cubic. So it's x cubed minus x squared um, plus 5x minus 5. So we could factor this by grouping. So we can group these terms and we can group these terms and factor these by grouping. 
So the greatest common factor of x cubed and x squared is x squared. So if I factor out an x squared, I'm left with x minus 1. And then factor out a positive 5 from here, so plus 5. When I factor out a 5, I get x and then minus 1. So this factors to be um, x minus 1 times x squared plus 5. So those are factors here x minus 1 and x squared plus 5. Uh, so what are our zeros? Well, we see that we have zeros uh, from this. We get negative 2 as a 0. And then from this, we get that. So we set each of these equal to 0. x minus 1 equals 0. x squared minus five, or, sorry, plus 5 equals 0. So this gives us a 0 of x equaling 1. And then this one, it looks like it's going to give us imaginary zeros. So if I subtract 5 from both sides, I get x squared equals negative 5. And then to solve this, I can take the square root of both sides. So take the square root. Take the square root. And remember, anytime you introduce a square root, you have to take the positive and negative square root. So I'm going to get that x equals plus or minus. Now remember, when you take the square root of a negative, that's going to give us an i. And then the square root of 5 isn't a whole number, so it's just going to be i rad 5. So all of our zeros here, the zeros for this polynomial function, are going to be x equals negative 2, x equals positive 1. Those are our real zeros. And then plus or minus i rad 5. So those are our zeros for this function. And then this is our function written in factored form. That's the factored form of our function.